Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion and welcome back to another This Week in Destiny update. So, on the list of topics for today, basically, the Bioware collaboration is live, preview of upcoming sandbox changes, that'll be the bulk of what we talk about, celebrate the Lunar New Year, Trials Map Voting, Destiny 2 Deal at Humble Bundle, uh, latest player support report updates, and the single art and movie of the week winners. So, going forward, of course, if you didn't see my video or haven't been paying attention, yes, the co or the collaboration between Mass Effect and Destiny is live, where you can make your Titans look like N7 Shepard, your Hunters look like Var Garrus Vicarian, and your Warlocks look like the La Liara to Sony. Ironically, though, the only one that actually looks accurate is Hunters. Well, I say more accurate. But, yeah, there's a trailer for it, and, of course, there is a usual share, if you wish, uh, with using that stuff. So, getting into Sandbox. So, starting off with some changes to abilities. Quick rundown of the next update will be a reduction in uptime for Threaded Spectre, few changes to Threadlings to make them easier to deal with in the Crucible, a fix for the re Restoration Timer Extension issue with a few corresponding changes to relevant Solar Fragments, and a small number of ability buffs that we've been pulling forward from our balance <laughs> pass in the final shape. Excuse me. Now... Just starting off, Threaded Spectre. Haven't played Crucible in quite a while, but allegedly it is overperforming in high-level PvP areas. First, uptime on the Threaded Spectre is significantly higher than we think is healthy, particularly with a fast cooldown of the Hunter Dodge combined with the two Threadling Grenade charges granted by Widow Silk. For update 7.3.5, we're implementing a change that applies the same class ability regeneration penalty that Insaring Slam does when the player creates a Threaded Spectre. We don't want this change to have a significant impact on Threaded Spectre's performance in PvE, so reducing the duration of that regeneration penalty by 50% went in PvE activities, which also applies to Ensnaring Slam, increasing its uptime in PvE. In addition, we're increasing Threaded Spectre's detonation damage versus PvE combatants by 25%, with the goal that you may be able to create fewer Shadow clones overall, each of them being more impactful to compensate. So generally, Ensnaring Slam reduce abil class ability regeneration penalty duration by 50% in PvE. Threaded Spectre, like it said before, has, shares the same class ability regen as Ensnaring Slam, but does increased PvE detonation. Then the other half, Threadlings. What they are doing to Threadlings. Increased aim assist shape size from 0.41 meters to 0.50 meters. This makes aim assist more effective against them, make them easier to shoot. Reduced base damage versus enemy players from 40 to 35, so hopefully it will be one less to kill somebody. And damage with the Threat of Evolution equipped reduced to 38.5 from 45. They also fixed an issue where groups of Threadlings were not reliably chain detonating after one was destroyed. Fixed an issue where Threadlings sometimes did not play their non-damaging destructive performance when destroyed by enemy fire, resulting in them appearing to blip out of existence. We realize those changes are not localized to Threadliner and also be affected, or will affect Broodweaver potency in the Crucible. To compensate for this, we're pulling some other buffs. Arcane Needle, Aim Assist is the size of the cone. Let's see. Uh, aim Assist Angle. They didn't say anything. Oh, Increased Aim Assist Angle by about 50%. Increased Aim Assist Fall Off Distance, so it detect auto detects for longer. Increased Tracking Angularity Velocity by about 5%. Increase the length of the projectile's tracking shape, and fix an issue where uncharged melees while arcane needles equipped result in the player appearing to freeze from a melee pose. Not gonna lie, as much as I know that is a more consistent thing, uh, that is more consistent, but I don't think there's any issue about consistency, possibly. Then, restoration and radiant buffs. The changes, and I think this is uh, it's what I was knowing. Fix an issue where the maximum duration of restoration and radiant buffs were being incorrectly stored, resulting in their buff timers resetting to their initial duration timer or the maximum when the buff was reapplied. This also resolves similar issues with shorter restoration sources like Sunspots and Sol Invictus. So if you didn't know what was happening, essentially, if you had an extended restoration timer, you had 10 seconds of restoration, if you somehow reapplied your restoration, it would reset to a different value. Now say... You had a buff that allows it to go to 10 seconds, but its actual timer was 7. If somehow you got another source of restoration while you had the 10 seconds, uh, it would go down to 7 automatically. So that is a good change, because now we actually have the correct restoration times. Alongside these changes, we adjusted both the Embers of Empyrean and the Pember of Mercy fragments left unchanged with the dramatically increased consistency resulting from the bug fix. Let's see, Ember of Mercy now extends your current restoration duration by 2 seconds when a fire... Uh, sprite is collected. If you don't already have restoration active, collecting a fire sprite grants restoration with a two second duration. The restoration extension is increased to three seconds while Ember of Solace is equipped. 
An Ember of Empyrean increased the maximum duration extension from 12 to 15 seconds. Reworked the duration extension granted with each Solar Defeat. Previously, it was granted a 4 second duration extension regardless of what type of enemy. Note the duration extension varies based on strength of target defeated. Defeating an elite or weaker combatant will result in less time in the game currently, but defeating champions or stronger combatants results in greater extension, as per usual. Now, solar ability buffs. Oh, right off the bat, we have something great. Consecration. Increase the travel distance of the initial ground follow, a projectile that travels along the surface like thermite grenades wave, from 18 to 20 meters. Increase the height of the slam ground follow detonation by a meter. Increase tra travel distance of the slam from ground follow from 16 to 20. Increase traversal speed of the slam ground follow, including the pyro gales enhanced version from 16 to 24. Now, I know it comes with POW, but I was really hoping it was going to be more than just extended range. Because most people that use Consecration, like myself, know how to use it well. We don't exactly need more range, we would just like more boom. So, yeah. And then Gunpowder Gamble changed. I'm actually happy for that I wasn't expecting, considering how many times I've accidentally thrown a Gunpowder Gamble while rocking Celestial. Reduce the maximum self damage from 144 to 80. So just a little bit of story time, uh, started using healing grenades and Celestial Nighthawk and solar weapons in the dungeon Warlord Ruin. It was working really well in terms of surviving and keeping myself alive, but I also went with Gunpowder Gamble just so I could have more damage and scorching options. However, there was many a time that I would throw the Gunpowder Gamble at my feet, and before I could run away and it auto-detonated, I blew myself up and I died. Then we have weapons. Heavy burst hand cannons. Corrected an issue that caused heavy burst hand cannons to have 25% less aim assist than other hand cannons when hip firing or airborne on mouse and keyboard. Bows. Reduce the auto aim fall off distance start by and end by 15%, i.e. aim assist will be less effective at long range. Reduce the maximum ammo or auto aim coin cone size by 5%. I guess this is PvP focused. We ship breakneck with one fewer perk than intended in the right column. Oops, uh, added the missing 12th perk target lock to breakneck's column. How did you do that? Lightweight scout rifles increase base damage by 5%, I guess across the board, or possibly just a crucible. Despite being less popular than other special weapons in PvP, sniper rifles are disproportionately oppressive to play against. See, reduced auto own cone size by 10%. Now, I swear, snipers are the hardest thing to do because... Every time they make a change, there is still the classic, I shoot him in the head with a high caliber round, then the flinch goes upwards, and even though the, the reticle is hailing Hydra, it somehow still clicks as a headshot. But you then, rocket launchers, precision, aka tracking frames, increase reserve ammo by 2 and reduce damage penalty from 10 to 5. So tracking, automatic tracking rocket launchers might be back. And then high impact as well, increased reserve ammo by two. Now deals more detonation damage and less impact for roughly the same total damage. More, make them more effective in groups uh, when getting splash damage. And the above changes will also affect Deathbringer, Gallahorn, and Truth. Nifty. Nifty, nifty. Now heavy, aka drum, mag, grenade launchers. Increase reserve ammo by a minimum of six rounds, maxing out of ten rounds depending on grenade launcher. Reduce spike grenades impact damage buff from 50% to 12.5%. With the below changes, this reduces the total spike grenades damage buff from 8 to 3%, making them less mandatory. Increase direct hit impact damage by 10% combined with the above average that brings non-spike grenade launchers almost up to the level of spike grenade launchers and very uh, slightly reduces the damage output with a spike grenade launcher. That actually sounds good. I don't think it's going to do much, though. Yeah, more ammo, but I feel like grenade launchers just need more damage entirely. And increased detonation damage by 5%. In PvP, this is offset by reduction to detonation damage for no overall chain. Wave frames. Oh. Oh, wait. Wave frame. Oh, wave frame heavy. I thought they were about to instigate a new meta that is, is not warranted. But heavy wave frames, which I believe there's only one currently in existence, maybe more in the future, but increased damage by 20% and wave width by 40%. So, nothing but good there. Caster Swords. Reduced heavy attack energy cost from 5 to 4 and increased heavy attack damage by 16%. I still don't know if that'll be enough. Uh, uh, frankly, all the other, like, like Throne Cleaver, Quick Fang, they're still just swords that if I think about swords, I think of them first, as opposed to anything else. And then, a specifics and exotics. Vigilant Swing will now have a deterministic recoil pattern. I guess that's just to have a solid pattern. Vexmith the Crash? Crashed. Class, increase ADS damage fall off from 
1.5 to 1.7, so a bit more range. Uh, I think this is during auto rifle form, though. Wish Ender True Sight is a good part of this. Let's see. Wish Ender True Sight will now deactivate if you leave ADS or hold it for longer than three seconds. To reactivate, you must fully redraw the bow. Um, Edge of Action's ball. Uh, huh. So does Oath Keepers now just do nothing? Oh, okay. So it still permanently holds the bow, you just lose True Sight. Well, that's actually something pretty good for the PvP crowd. There's too many people that just wish edged everything. Then, uh, Edge of Action increased its damage resistance in PvP uh, or PvE against all combatants except bosses to 85%. Increases damage resistance against bosses to 15. Hmm. Nifty. Manticore. Man, I thought I would never hear that word again. Players now must be airborne for 0.5 seconds and deal damage with the weapon to activate its perk. This prevents accidental activation when running down stairs or doing small jumps. That's good. Gave it a special reload to quickly disengage the floating. Swapping weapons will continue to disengage as well. Taraba also receives this special reload animation. While anti-grav thrusters are engaged, combatants will be less accurate when targeting the player, similar to the way that always on time Sparrow. While the catalyst final blows and sustained damage of Manticore grant a void overshield and return ammo to the mag. Interesting. Now, let's see. Do, 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 do. X Dearest increased impact damage against PvE enemies by 50%. Detonation damage is unaffected, so the total damage increases to about 20%. Increase the maximum fire rate uh, by 17%. Uh, we'll have to see. It's annoyingly, or I must say, it sounds like a good perk, but at the same time, from what I recall, X Dearest is kind of hard to hit targets, especially when they're fast. Then, Heal Clip now grants Cure Times 2 to the player while still granting Cure Times 1 to nearby enemy, or nearby allies. Trench Barrel can now be activated by dealing damage with ranged melee attacks. Thank you, Bungie. I cannot stress how annoying it was that close range, like thunder, uh, Thunderclap, Shoulder Charges, that they didn't proc Trench Barrel. Now that is so nice. Um... Barrel Constrictor, once activated, no longer deactivates upon firing a shot. It lasts for 7 seconds and buffs all shots fired during that time. Enhanced Constrictor lasts for 8.5 seconds. Eh, not too bad. Loose Change, applying a subclass 3.0 buff, now grants plus 20 assist and plus 20% reduced ADS movement speed penalty, in addition to the existing additional reload. Applying another debuff now refreshes the irritation. Not gonna lie... And I still don't know if that's good. Dual loader. Remove the reload speed penalty, period. Solid. Change the wording of the perk description to make it clear that increases the number of shots reloaded, so we can now apply it to the other weapon types without confusion in the future. Interesting. Let's see. More text mechanical weapons. So what's the change to text? Now grants plus 20% range and 1.5% degree hip fire precision cone angle in addition to its other effects. Thank you. See, the perk was good, but the problem is none of the text mechanical weapons had the Dead Man's Tail perfect hip fire accuracy. So a hip fire buff or a buff granted by hip fire was pointless if you had to hip fire because it was just clunky. So an actual buff to hip fire with this perk works out. Hake Breach Ornaments now works against Void Shields, Strand Clones, Cabal Projection Shields, and Briggs. Oh, that includes also Deconstruct and Sundering. I should have read the rest of that. But specifically, Hake Breach Armaments, damage bonus versus Stasis Crystals reduced from 85% to 60% to match other things. That seems un unfortunate. Let's see. As if Origin Trait Sundering has a fairly high uptime in Warlord's Ruin because of the number of eye turrets. However, a perk theme about breaking stuff doesn't apply broadly. Can now trigger on Shield Break in addition to final blows on vehicles and constructs. At a small reload speed scaler when reducing the char charge rate benefit to account for the higher uptime. Then hatchling activation requirements are no longer locked to the archetype in terms of precision or non-precision. Instead, the perk will trigger with either precision kill or three non-precision kills. Interesting. Target lock now activates later in the magazine for SMGs at 20% instead of 12.5. So the damage buff will swing primary weapon gunfights less often. I think that's another intended immortal nerf, even though I don't even know if that's still OP. Envious Assassin now activates, or each activation now capped at 100% of the magazine size instead of 150, and the maximum overflow is now three times the magazine size and tens of four. 
Not gonna lie, that's kind of surprising. I didn't think they would be touching that after some time. Bait and switch. Oh no. Reduce damage bonus from 35% to 30. Unfortunate, because bait and switch is just plain nice. One two punch now correctly deactivates after dealing damage with a powered melee. Deconstruct updated the perk description to correctly state that it pulls ammo from thin air, not reserves. Fixed a bug preventing the perk from triggering when shooting an enemy titan barricade and similar targets. Mods, bonus damage against mini bosses should have been part of boss spec, not major spec, so updating mods to uh, predict that. Then from the future, we pulled a lot of balance changes from the final shape in Destiny 2 into the light and update 7.3.5, and we still have a number of small but exciting changes shipping into the light. Touching content many players haven't thought about in several years. In the final shape, we're rebalancing many weapons and types, including PvE, buffing underperforming weapons, and leaving most high performance untouched. Since we're looking into PvE weapon tuning anyway, over the year of the final shape, we'll be looking at weapon mods that feel mandatory, as we intend to make some changes that will increase player choice, particularly in PvE. We are also making substantial changes to several of the least used exotic weapons. We see a lot of requests at these, see if you can guess which exotics we touched, and adjusting some perks, including long requested change to chill clip, is that putting it back to where it was and making it more viable as on slower filing weapons? Look forward to a variety of other things. Skipping the Crucible sandbox and Titan. No, I'm just playing around. <laughs> Let's see. Although, I think this might just be more talking. Let's see. Actually, no, this is just, I think, another talk. They don't talk about many changes they're doing, more of what they are going to try and do. Uh, da, 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 da. ah, here are some changes that will be happening. Player health will be increased by 30% in base crucible. So players have 100 health and up to 70 and uh, 116 to 30% shield, depending on the player's resistance values. Ability cooldowns. Let's see, melee, grenade, and class ability cooldowns now have a 15% penalty applied to them in crucible only. Super cooldowns now have a 20% penalty applied to them in crucible only. Ability damage. Increased base sumer damage of supers by 31%. Melee damage increased by 16%. Arc flux grenade specifically increased by 16%. Interesting. Player weapon archetypes. Let's see. Increased hit damage for pulse rifles, auto rifles, sidearms, and scout rifles by 14%. Hand cannons increased crit hit damage by 10% and body shot damage by 5 Reduced flinch dealt to players by projectile impact by 12% and by explosive payload by 10%. Submachine guns increased crit damage and body shot damage. Bows reduced base damage by 15%. Okay, so from the sound of things, I didn't read a lot of these, but essentially raising player health, but also increasing time to kill just to mitigate something and also increasing cooldowns to once again not rely so much on abilities. Then let's see special ammo acquisition. You will start every game, all game types, including round-based modes like Dominion, with two kills worth of special ammo for your chosen weapon. Instead of a kill, two kills worth special ammo being granted every time you respawn, you will earn more ammo by filling up a special weapon ammo meter, with points given for getting kills, assist, or completing objectives. Getting 100 points grants you two kills worth of special ammo for your chosen weapon. Man, I feel like they keep not hitting the mark with this. They need to just do what Bun or Bungie did in Destiny 1 and just have the respawn crates. Because this is a snowball effect. If somebody absolutely slays out, they could just keep the special ammo and just keep getting the kills over and over again. I feel like Bungie is not really paying attention when they understand the snowball effect that comes with earning your own ammo through performance and just random ammo spawning on the map. But yeah, there's lots of details and numbers. Let's see, general notes. Kill from special ammo weapons and heavy ammo weapons do not grant any... Well, I just ate my own words there. Jumping off the map will subtract progress from the special ammo meter. Ammo is not dropped on death and you will not lose the special ammo you have earned when you are defeated or are revived. Earned special ammo will carry over between rounds. Swapping from double primary weapons to a special ammo will reset your meter progress. Hmm. And special weapon archetypes. Let's see. Increased base damage of trace rifles, shotguns, and fusion rifles by 20%. Glaze have their projectile damage increased by 20% and melee damage by 16%. I think this is still in PvP, just a heads up. Heavy grenade launchers, something we talked about. Reduced detonation damage by 5%. Increased machine gun damage by 20%. That sounds good. Let's see. And some more individual changes. Fighting Lion, reduced damage versus players in Crucible by 20%. The Devil's Ruin Laser Beam is reduced damage by 15%. Crimson's Flinch is being reduced by 17.5%. Uh, 
Forerunner is getting increased damage versus players in Crucible by 20%. That was unexpected. Symmetry's Revolution damage versus players is increased by 16%. So that is a lot. I know we're already going on a lot of minutes of this video, and I thank you for bearing with me if you actually made it through all that. But moving on, there is the Lunar New Year, Year of the Dragon stuff. Very fitting. If you want to redeem them, go to this link or bungie.net slash redeem. And literally just copy and paste that nine-digit code. You can go ahead and just pick them up. And then there is, of course, returning stuffs if you want them from last year's Lunar New Year, if you so wish. And the next trial maps is the Dead Cliffs, to no one's surprise. Now, the Humble Bundle, I'm sure people have been seeing this and making notes of it. But basically, there is lots of stuff available for a large sale. Essentially, the story as far back as year four as including Forsaken, but essentially Beyond Light, The Witch Queen, the 30th Anniversary Pack, and Lightfall is all together for $40. Now, I will stress this, some of these packs were $40 when they launched, so that's almost a 5-in-1. Now, at the same time, you also get a few things, including the Annual Pass, which includes Ghost of the Deep and Warlord's Ruin, if you so want them. Uh, so, there you go. If you're ever holding out on buying stuff, now is the time. Then into the support updates, new sub forums. Let's see the Fireteam Finder help, the sub forum for accessibility as well, in case you have any issues that you're looking for help specifically there. Then claiming games to give rewards. If you have an issue, go to the article to track down those. And if you have um, been unable to locate the email, submit tickets there. And then known issues. Um, I guess they're not advertising any. So if you want to review the known issues, there's the link and report anything to the help forum. So with that, that is art and movies of the week. And oh my god, well, I don't know if that's more than one. Just because one definitely seems to be like a part one, part two. But uh, I digress. Yes, that was a lot, but that typically goes with for every time we get inklings into sandbox changes for the future uh, seasons. But with that, I will admit there was some stuff that definitely sounded good. Some stuff that seemed a little bit underwhelming. Consecration, please. Uh, but, you know, it's all that sort of stuff. There's always positives and negatives when it comes to all of these changes, generally. But with that, my name is Matt Scorpion, and thank you for watching.